Welcome to Anne Double D, your go-to podcast for candid conversations. Dive deep with us into the heart of life's challenges, business hurdles, and the journey to better ourselves. Join us in exploring the art of living intentionally, finding balance, and enhancing not just your life, but your business and leadership skills. It's time to grow, to inspire, and to lead, and Double D. Conversations that transform. Is that right, Hayden? It is indeed, yeah. Great to be back with you, Dave. Looking forward to uh, this uh, this session. I mean, that's a monumental thing in itself, isn't it? That since we last did this and recorded, the, the Queen of England has passed, the Queen of the Ooh. UK. Um, and, 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 of course, you're in the town where it all happened. Yeah, it was... Um... Quite crazy. The morning of the news was uh, I actually went to walk, walk to the castle gates where everybody had started to place flowers. And there was already the the um, many, many bouquets being placed down there. And yeah, it was very, very summer mood because actually thinking about leadership, one of our one of the most stable leaders we had had was no longer there. And the influence she had on globally, I think, was dramatic. And yeah, it was a almost an end of an era type uh, type moment when she passed so um, yeah very interesting to be here and around it when it happened I, I, it's what it was it's, I, with no intention if anyone's listened to start here at all if you'd heard us in the preamble to <laughs> win the episode we didn't i i we, we didn't plan this but i i it's just where you live though isn't it and, it, and i i remember coming back from america in uh, from a four or five week road trip uh, just in time to watch the actual funeral mm-hmm. and you I remember sitting down going, we'll watch, it was a bank holiday Monday, wasn't it? We'll watch it for a bit. And we watched it all day because it was this, um, you know, uh, I don't know what the word is, ceremonial act of history. Yeah. I mean, how, how far away was the march from where you live or the town? And did, and did you hear it? So we heard the salute from the cannons. Yeah. With a probably about a two second delay from the actual cannon and then the TV cannon going off. So there was a, that was quite interesting that you could hear it actually happening and then hear it a second time on the, um, on the TV. So we didn't go up because the town was absolutely crazy, but it was, we're probably a 35 minute walk away from the long walk. So we could have gone up and been there amongst the, the hullabaloo, but it was, um, yeah, it was, uh, we decided to watch a bit on TV. So, but it was, yeah, there was definitely a, very strange atmosphere around the town in the days running up to and then the day of the funeral itself. You went into London too, didn't you? I think if I remember. Mm. Yeah, you did. So, so when she was lying in state, is that right? That's right. Yep. So um, the, and again, just the, just the outpouring of feeling. Um, and I, I was thinking about it the other day, actually, strangely, it's just, it, it was like you'd lost your own grandmother. Yeah. Yeah, to the grandmother to the nation, I think, and and she really had that kind of feeling of you'd lost your own grandmother was was the sense of it. So yeah, it was amazing how one life can have touched so many. Which again, when we think about leadership, is a part of that influence that we can have. It's a, you're entirely right, and and I and I I love that link to leadership because it was that that was that's my curiosity. In the same way, when Mandela, Mandela passed, you thought, wow, what a historical moment, and this one just seemed to be. Um, even greater, and but I, I, I think going from there, you know, Windsor mm-hmm. leadership legacy. What what's been happening in your life uh, oh, since since we spoke with you last? Yeah, so I'm trying to think when when that was, but it's been a while ago now. So um, I think the most important things is we have continued to um, grow from business perspective. Um, yeah. So we are working with some really great clients, working with some of the same clients, but we've also got some really nice, new, exciting and interesting clients to work with. Yeah. Growing personally. Um, so continuing to invest in my own personal growth, my own learning, so I can be of better service to others. So again, linked into what we talked about last time is, you know, you can't, uh, can't pour from an empty cup and we have to work on ourselves to work on others. So I've continued to invest in myself. Good. Physically, done started to do um change up the way that I look after myself physically so a little more strength and condition as I as I get older the need yeah. to do more of the um support to to maintain a healthy lifestyle as we as we get older that's been working on that um and I think that probably the biggest 
real shift since we last spoke was the world has opened up again. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if we were still in the depths of COVID at the time, but we were certainly early stages of coming out of. Um, and so I'm now finding a lot more time being face to face with people again, being in rooms with groups, teams, um, traveling more, uh, seeing more of the world. And I think that's that's probably the thing that I'm most grateful for since we were last together is that opening up of the world again. It is tremendous. Now, you might be in trouble, Hayden, because there is one other thing that's happened since then, am I right? Uh, yes, there is one other thing. Slightly major. <laughs> didn't you, uh, didn't you, I'll give you, I'll give you a chance to recover before <laughs> I say one other main I, I did, I have got married in the time between uh, when we last, uh, last spoke <laughs> and now, yeah, so on a personal level, yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> Just to anyone listening, this is not his order of priorities. He told me to <laughs> do things into a crescendo, and the last thing he's going to say is the most important, isn't that right? Absolutely. Very All good. Right. Babe. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't resist, right? <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, you've seen the books being rewritten, yep. and I've got a few questions I want to ask you, uh, but the, uh, let's talk about maybe in a slightly different order from where we started. Mm. What's your view on leadership today? Leader. Um, yeah. Yeah. How much do you see of it? You know, in, in, you know, not necessarily in specific locations, right? Because that's not fair. But how often do you come across it? Uh, every day, all day. Um, to be, and that's not really being facetious. That's, that's, yeah. we, you know, you look around, you look in the press, you look in the on the news, you look in person when you are going into locations and working in businesses, being a customer. It, it's still, unfortunately, everywhere and impacting everything. And I only just like, so, you know, I'm a massive Formula One fan, looking at all the yeah. whole stuff that's happening around the ethics of the people who lead the, the, the sport um, and the... Uh, potential interference in actual races you look yeah. at the christian horner um thing that's that's been happening and irrelevant of the validity or not validity of the allegations this the way it's been handled the 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 um, press around it is all is all shit uh, and it's having a major impact on um on the sport and also anybody who really is associated with with the, the business and the brand so yeah unfortunately seen far too much of it on a more personal level hearing too many people talking nonsense around various concepts and ideas but not actually able to have a sensible conversation with somebody um, yeah. lack of real honesty or lack of real authenticity um yeah just just i think we are still devoid of really strong examples in which i think why talking about the queen when we first started was somebody who had stoically and, and yes made many mistakes as well but stoically had held true to an ideal of what her role was and sacrificed herself for that role i don't see enough people willing to put aside their own agendas for the good of their people their organizations and have the positive influence that they really should be having i i i'm learning at the moment about three uh three important things things um and and it's synchronicity so what is a synchronistic opportunity right so and how do they appear in your life mm -hmm. then there's um looking at that synchronistic opportunity and saying okay um what is the partnerships that are available in them where the values are shared and the ideals are the same mm -hmm. And how do you bring that opportunity to life? Which is, a, and I've used the word opportunity twice, but that's a different way of thinking. And, I, and it's really, it's, I, I, I highlight it as an example, because if you were to say, how do you do some of those things differently, thinking about others' needs or other people in, in a process, in times like the global trading situation, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. But those three words force you immediately to go, Hold on a minute. Even in the problems I'm facing, there'll be some kind of synchronistic opportunity if you're open to it. Yeah. So, you know, if you go into a, a, a matched partnership, right, where 
you've done the check, right, to make sure that it is a connection and it is aligned, your goals are similar, the behavior is the same, you know, then where can that go? And, then I, and, and, I, and I know we're interviewing you, and recently we listened to a book called uh, No Bullshit Strategy by a chap called Alex. Mm. And, um, and in that book, I love the idea of that when you've made something like mindset leadership, your company, sometimes you've got to let it go in its own direction. Mm-hmm. And, that, and therefore, by thinking, and in my own businesses, thinking about synchronistic opportunity partnerships and opportunity, that allows you to at least give that a shot and not be caught in leadership street, which is where if it's self, me versus others, then it's me versus you. It's win-lose everywhere, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I love that combination of the synchronicity and then the partnerships and then that leading to the opportunity. Because when you start to think that way, there will always be opportunities there. You You can't help but fall over opportunities when you start to shift your mindset to being rather than competing to be in that synchronicity and partnership. So um, talk to me about mindset leadership for a moment. So if there, if there was a thing about that, the evolution of your business, you know, going through some really challenging times, and mm-hmm. let's not repeat the past in COVID, but, you know, to where we are today, or the market opening up face-to-face, what what's the thing you want people to know the most about mindset in, in 2024? Um, really, the I guess the thing that's just for the record, uh, Hayden just answered that question with um, uh, just for the listeners. So uh, it, it's strategic, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it strategic? Eh? It is strategic. Um. <laughs> the thing that we are communicating the most right now is the importance of. The importance of good quality conversations. Yeah. The importance of communication and doing that in a way that actually creates connection as opposed to being a very transactional, process-driven way of communicating. Yeah. So I think that the the answer to the question, what's most important to us right now, what are we trying to communicate ourselves? It is the value of regular connected communication. I like that. Regular connected communication. I'm going to write it in a way I'm able to read later. Regular <laughs> connected communication. That's almost the opposite, right? I, I think that's a really good message. I, I think people need connection. If you go back to leadership, there is a we're still living in an age where fear overrides hope. Mm-hmm. Still, right? That's not going away anytime soon. But what I like about some of the things you and I believe in is that one person can change that one person at a time. And if you can put regular connected communication into that, very good. You can connect more. Thank you. You can <laughs> you can connect more people to it, can't you? Absolutely. Good. Yeah, there's, there's an opportunity there for, as you say, at an individual micro level, mm. I can make a change today that will influence the future relationship that I have with a person who I am connected with in, in, in all in all fields of our life as well. So whether that be at work, whether that be in our social life, whether that be with our partners or our loved ones, whoever that is, we can we can make that shift. Um, and it doesn't take long and it doesn't require a really in-depth skill set. Uh, I I, uh, I really like that. I, you just made me write something down. And this may or may not be true, but it's a thought I just had live in our episode together, mm-hmm. Aidan. What do you think of this? Consciousness is in the moment. Our energy lasts forever. Mm, very nice. Do you agree or disagree? Consciousness is in the moment and the energy lasts forever. I definitely agree with the energy lasting for forever. So the impact spiraling out from that moment. And yeah, I guess I couldn't disagree with consciousness like happening in the moment because when else would consciousness exist, I guess, would be my question. So yeah, I think, a, I, I, think I'll, I think I'll give that a tick. Yeah, thank you. I, I just I thought you stimulated listening to you. So I thought I'd, I'd write it down before I say it and never, ever say it again. 
Um, <laughs> I, I think it's that connected communication that reg has made me think about it. Um, in terms of leadership today, so mm. le leadership 2.0 in the book is about modeling the right leadership required of our time, yeah. regardless of the consequences. And, and the preface I'm adding at the moment to extend positive influence, right? So it's not about doing what you like to whoever you like, whenever you like, but you could read it that way, yeah. which is an which would be not what I intended at all. Yeah. This is about standing up for the right things, modeling leadership in the right way, influencing with the right intent, and just thinking about opportunity, synchronistic stuff and partnerships, all of that and your regular connected communication wrapped up in there. What, what do you think of... Uh, leadership 2.0 and why do you think it's important or do you think it's important i so I, I definitely do think it's important i think me leadership 2.0 is it's been clear on what matters to you yeah which goes back to our, our conversation around our values it goes back to our conversation around our sense of purpose the 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 meaning that we are trying to create which again links into yeah. one of the chapters in the book yeah is that sense of meaning and then from there and coming out from those kind of views of our own values is okay if i hold these values am i willing to stand up for these values am i willing to 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 take on the challenge that will inevitably come when somebody doesn't hold the same values as i do and there's not that's not a we should all have the same values comment, but that is if I believe in something enough for it to be a core value, it can't be that if I'm not willing to then address it when I see people who are acting in a way that contravenes that value and I'm not willing to challenge it or I'm not willing to have the discussion of it, not from the point of view of trying to make you have the same value, but actually just so we can have a discord on how our values differ and what that means for us. Yeah, hundred percent. Because a, a, a you know a different view or a different version enriches the conversation. Absolutely. So you can actually disagree on major things, but lean in and contribute greatly to the compromise of something. Yeah. You know, the politics at its best is described in a scenario like that. At its absolute best, I think the shame there, without wasting any podcast time on it is it seems to go from one end to the other. Yeah. Um, and it's the central area where breakthroughs are found. So I really like that. And it's that polarization, Dave, that's happening right now is we are just seeing a world that is becoming more and more polarized because there is stigma attached to opposing views as opposed to leaning in and having the conversation about I think X, you think Y. We can both hold those views and still have a very strong combination and connection despite the fact that we have very different perspectives on the world totally and, and uh, one of our team rachel was talking to us about the other day that about a time where in fact i watched the bbc comedy show the other day where mm -hmm. an episode where there's a bloke that doesn't ask questions it's um i don't even know what it's called the show but it's uh, it's quite funny it's family living in a house and this 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 relative comes and he and he'll answer any question quite eloquently, but he won't ask a question. And the game in the episode was about can they get this guy to ask a question? And they do in the end. But I think there's a skill. And and Rachel from our team was saying that even in the most difficult situation she's been in throughout her career, she will do what John Maxwell also once said: find one thing to connect on. Sometimes Ooh. that's really hard. But even with polar views, it's the it's like the key, isn't it? It's the yeah. moment. To get connected again, just Absolutely. one thing. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it's you both like chips or crisps, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's something rather than nothing. Yeah, and I and I truly believe in it. So it, it really sits at the heart of my view of the world is no matter who I meet from wherever they are, there'll be more that's the same than there will be that's different. Yeah. We will have more okay. shared things than we will have that are different. And actually, yeah. I was talking about one of our clients um, the other day. We were talking about change and managing change and the need for dealing with ambiguity and everything that's going on in the world right now and the fact that we're in this rapidly evolving space that feels like it's constantly shifting. And in that conversation, we were saying that the challenge that a lot of leaders do is they focus on what's different 
but they lose sight of what's staying the same. Yeah. And if you want to manage change, actually, it's really important you focus on what's staying the same because that helps to alleviate the anxiety of the thing that's changing. Because if you change something in the business, there'll be a hundred things that are still going to be the same. You're absolutely right. I think about all the mergers we get involved in directly or indirectly. One of the single tasks I love talking to business owners about doing is exactly what you said, which is when you first, particularly if you're the acquisition company, is what are the things that are the same, taking your point, right, that make us feel okay, Mm -hmm. that this is going to be all right. And then for both parties, what are the two or three things that are going to give you edge and difference that you didn't have before? And all of a sudden, the frame of reference is, I just drew myself, um, the frame of reference is completely different, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, and that anxiety, that trepidation and the fear that you described earlier starts to dissipate when you shift the view to sameness and opportunity. But for our listeners, what a great message about meeting people and realising or deciding or choosing or modelling that you're going to have more shared than that's different. That's a really great thought process when you're in situations that maybe maybe you're feeling uncomfortable, maybe you don't quite want to do, and, and then all of a sudden that's a way out of that for us. And you could you could do something with that. What do you think of the new format of the book, Aidan? I like it. I, so I think you've done a great job with the um, the way that you've presented it. So I love the 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 feel of the book first of all. So when it landed in the in the um through the post to us and open it up the feel of the book is really nice so aesthetically it looks fantastic um and as you say sits really nicely alongside the framework book as, as a combination um and then the structure of um having the speed part at the beginning which i really like the fact that i can have a very quick overview and almost like your blinkest view of the book yeah straight straight there which works really well and models exactly how people are feeling right now in the world where they are we're busier we feel like we're busier than ever or people are claiming to be busier than ever so that that taps into that need for instant um, ability to connect with it and then the route down to each of the individual chapters to then dive a little bit deeper and again i like the way that you've separated the chapters out with again bite-sized chunks even within the chapters i don't need to sit and read a whole chapter i can take elements of it and i can start to think about some of the practices um and then with your some of your resources that go with it and then um having at the end the the interviews that you had with all of the contributors to the book in one place really sheds a different perspective on all of the content that you've covered so it helps to really bring it to life from that individual's perspective which again i think is um so yeah i think fabulous job overall it, it works really well and we were talking before we came on on air about the fact that it is a it's a pick me up put me down but keep keep close to me type book as opposed to something you read once and then sits on the shelf gathers dust and doesn't doesn't ever come back out again one of the things we said at a thank you at the start of the this particular series of, of the podcast was that leadership is a moving thing it's not stagnant it's not stationary mm. so book is designed to stimulate action and even as you said at the end of every chapter you can stop and ask how am i going to do this what am i going to do answer the simple questions apply change transform and and then spend some time i think practicing it and to see how you get on and yeah. mess it up a bit do it better a bit you know and find out what works for yeah. you That's the important part isn't it absolutely yeah definitely it's that that and the accessibility of i can just pick it up and give it a go and then the fact that you've got and i've got the in front of me the whole list of various different techniques that i can then flick to the page and i've got an instant guide as to how to do these things so it's very yeah. works on a conceptual level works on a theoretical level and then works on a very practical action-based level now i think you probably uh realized that this may not be true but i must take all the kudos for the way it's all mind <laughs> it's all my own idea <laughs> I think you know that's not true. Um, mm. Kudos to Debbie Halls Evans for design and Rachel for co-editing the the workflow that made that come together. But the last time you talked about a specific chapter, mm. as you look at the new format, was there was there was it that chapter you still kind of connected to, or was there a different one that stood out to you? And any highlights from your side? 
Yeah, so the one that so obviously the the chapter that we spoke about last time, the, the selfish or selfless, is still still resonates and still is important to me. That that sense of agency we talked about last time still still sits really important in my thoughts. But as I sit here now, I've got the chapters in front of me. But the one I think the one that really stood out for me was and and again the interview with with Bob Gay about it. But the meaningful or meaningless one was probably the one that really resonated. Um, with where we are right now, where I am right now, um, that that one really kind of stood out as to how do we how do we create more meaning in our lives and how do we eradicate the meaningless side of things? Now, of course, a um, couple of things. Uh, are you aware what's happened to you? No. Well, I, I should enlighten you. Um, it sounds like careful, Ed. You've been Bob Gate. <laughs> I think I might. Ah, that, it's official. And I, what's really nice is it's happened live in a podcast episode. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to tell her. Hayden Bratt's been Barb Gade from Denver. <laughs> you even used Eradicate, and her business is called Radish Modern Business Accounting and Radish Accounting. So you, you've even used her business name in your description. I mean, you are a Jedi, Hayden Bratt. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But you've officially been Barb Gade. I actually think meaning is a missing ingredient uh, still, and and I I think there you can't help it. There's there's some things you got to do, right? Yeah. Let's let's pick things off. A fat return in Britain, right? Is that fun? No, right. Um, serious things you have to review from time to time. Contracts, you know, uh, legal stuff. Yeah. No one wants to sit and do it, but you got to do it. But if you can put meanings into any one of those. Do you find they're a bit easier to do? Yeah, totally. It's, again, we all have those parts of our role that we could just do without, or that we not we're not enjoy. We don't put a big smile on our face when we see it land in the inbox. But when you understand that, actually, either it connects to somebody else. So by me doing this, it enables somebody else, or informs somebody else, or communicates somebody else or it has an impact on the way we operate and protects us or supports us. But it, everything has some kind of meaning to it. And when we go looking for that meaning, rather than again, just focusing on the fact that we don't like it or it doesn't feel good or it's um, uh, against our, our views or our thoughts on things, then I think it helps us to just overcome some of the, some of the negative emotion that might, come alongside the influence because yeah that, pretty much everything you can find a meaning for hmm. I, I think my meaning is personal isn't it so but we'll come back to meaning in a second but for anyone listening can you recall when we first met how long ago was it oh it's definitely 15-ish years maybe more yeah. How long? Isn't that inc incredible? Do you remember that? Do you remember that mill house place you rented? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, I think I, I I want to give you a belated apology on the podcast today. I want because I've just remembered they had this um, white controller thing. Did you ever get billed for that? By the way, <laughs> no, we didn't. I, it opened curtains, and I I I was asked to look after it, so I did. <laughs> but after it so well, I actually took it home. <laughs> and I had no idea how to return it. So I'm really sorry, Hayden. Um, well, we, I wasn't aware of that and they didn't make us aware of that. So that's okay. That's, that's a really, and it's not, the trouble is, it's not like it's any use to you either. Not it's, really. It just sat in our house in Bolton for ages. <laughs> um, it probably stayed there even when it was the house was rented out. Um, but um, anyway, but I suppose that's an example of meaning less, isn't it? But that's uh, it. Do you ever look back at that period of time as to how different your life is today to where it was at that moment in time and uh, look at the, you know, the connected meaning and, and look at it and, and what, what do you see when you look at it? Yeah. So at the time when we met, I was probably felt quite restricted, slightly controlled, slightly small underplaying the opportunity that i could bring and if i now look at my life now some 15 years on 
the freedom, the ability to connect, but to connect at a much larger scale, the impact we can have outside of a relatively finite group of people. And yeah. for me personally, the meaning, the 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 sense of happiness, satisfaction, joy that I have in my life compared to then is is yeah uh, incomparable. And so I, no, I I I enjoyed the, that time when I was there, but as I look back now, is is I would never want to go back to the me that was there at that time because I've grown, yeah, just just unbelievable amounts of, since that time. Yeah, I would agree. You have. If you were to do, I, I've got two more questions for you. Then it's hmm. your turn to be something. If you could get in a time machine and go all the way back to Hayden in that house, all the way back then, and pick apart a belief maybe you held, what advice would you give yourself in that moment? The advice I would give, so if I was to pick apart the belief, the belief that I would pick apart was that it's not possible, probably, would be the, the, the lack of possibility of being able to live a different type of life and be able to then have a lifestyle that comes with it. So that would be the belief that I would pick apart and the advice that I would give myself would be the advice that I eventually did give myself, which is what's the worst that can happen? And don't look back thinking, if only, look back thinking, I learned yeah so let's now let's now imagine so if you've got that insight today and now let's go the other way mm -hmm. so let's imagine <clears throat> hayden in the future 15 years time uh let's let's be really positive maybe even looking marginally younger than you do today somehow right now nothing the way nothing wrong with the way you look by the way if anyone's <laughs> listening but it's the future anything's possible absolutely uh, what do you think future Hayden, 15 years in the future, would say to you today now, what, even with all that you know today, what's the feeling you get? I think the thing that if I project myself forward to a period of time in the future, and coming back to what we spoke about earlier on, was I think the advice I would get would be stay true to what you believe. Yeah. And stand I, I, what you believe. I think it's important. I, I, I'm glad you said that. I can connect with it um, in a regularly connected communication. Right? <laughs> you nice. know. Thank you. Uh, I can connect with that because I, I, I feel like at this point in my life, the there is a need to go deep into the rock and anchor yourself in and stay there. Hmm. And hold fast to it so it's not about being stationary it's about your roots being do you know the other day right we were planting our christmas trees and uh, Olin would have been really proud we were planting our christmas trees so we made that change a few years ago we only buy trees for christmas you can actually plant right yeah and i was amazed that these trees and you've been to easter she and that are down in the garden area in the farm and they're ginormous they're really tall but I was amazed at how far across the actual garden area, which is quite mm -hmm. wide, the roots went and how many of them there were. Yeah. Um, to the point where to plant another tree, I had to get past a couple of them. And, and you're going, these trees are really, really serious about staying here for yeah. as long as the world lets them. Yeah, I, I think that's what that means, isn't it? That's what that's what you, you're, you're talking about, being deeply rooted solid absolutely so deeply rooted and, and i love the, the analogy of the roots because it is that the stronger that platform the more you can then shift with the wind shift with the changes adapt to what's needed but you've got yeah. that real strong core of who you are and what you stand for and what matters in 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 your life that would be the thing yeah as i very nearly turn 50 that will be the that will be the thing that i think would be the 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 um advice yeah. on so it's hard let's 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 believe it's only half time right 
Absolutely. Um, yeah. So is, is there anything you'd like to ask me today? Well, I, I want to come back to your synchronicity partnerships and opportunity. And I want I guess my my question for you would be what are you doing daily to practice that? Because that's that's a great idea and a great thought process. I want to turn that into an action that I could maybe learn from and apply in my own business. So how could how do you apply that on a daily basis? What's a practice that I could gain from you that I could apply? Uh, it's it's a uh, as always, you know, I, I strangely have an answer. Um, <laughs> so I have the eight things I like to do every day, which is a separate thing. Uh, this is a frame of reference. Mm -hmm. So I have a frame of reference and it's it's almost like the perfect analogy where you like putting your glasses on, right? So, you know, I don't know how bad your eyes are versus mine, but uh, we're both wearing glasses in terms of the audio track. But I, I know the difference that this makes when I put them on, when I really want to see clarity. Yeah. And the, the frame of reference for me is that I put that frame of reference on intentionally. And in that picture... Is the energy it creates? Mm -hmm. It's a view, it's a it's a viewpoint I can use. It's very sensory specific. Uh, it's a feeling I then create that allows me to be open in my soul and my spirit. Now, I'm really worried that that might sound a little bit. Oh my lord, what's that about? But it's not right because if you replay it, it and and if you do, you know, the old in the old days, rewind the cassette tape back and play that again. <laughs> You realize I'm tuning in my senses. I'm, I'm, I focus on my frame of reference, being in tune with that. And then the other thing that I do in addition, let's not pretend things are rosy in the garden every day because they're not, right? Yeah. Is when I feel um, words that people will connect with, my version of a bit of pressure, yeah. my version of a little bit of you know anxious energy, um, my brain bring into my attention, um, you know, all kinds of feelings that are about me surviving and thriving is I, I piggy bank on those energies and I redirect them. I don't change them. I don't yeah. stop them. I don't stop and let them pass. I hijack them and I still connect them to my frame of reference so that whenever I'm magnating, that's not even the word, whenever I'm generating energy in my being, whatever yeah. you think being is, right? Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I use it towards the intentions and the frame of reference that I have in front of me. So mm -hmm. I make a conscious choice to put that on. Yeah. Um, uh, I would like to say six days out of seven. Yeah. Um, to, because sometimes sometimes I wake up and they're already on, right? Oh, by the way, have you ever gone to, gone to bed with your glasses on? Isn't it annoying? Right? <laughs> For a second, you forget to take them off because it's, it's still relatively new in my life existence to have these. But the so but so, but you can metaphorically wake up with it on. But yeah. it's, it, that's that's how I physically make sure those things are present every day. And then when I'm in a conversation where I'm unsure, so true partnership is a boundless concept, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll do deep diving into values checking before entering into where that can go. But if it aligns, I find myself, Hayden, being totally wide open. Yeah. So if the alignment is true, yeah. and I've had experiences in my career where it hasn't been, it's been out by a degree or so, yeah. and it hasn't worked. Uh, we've got one or two going on at the moment that are really exciting. Um, and, and they're going to, these three things are going to be put, I'm, I'm reading it on my desk, they're going to be put to the test big time. But it is, if, it's like, it's it literally is, you've got to decide what's in your frame of reference. And for me, these powerful synchronistic words are three that I'm practicing daily by choosing to see those colors, those energies in the conversations and in the relationships that I hold dear. Does that answer your question? That does indeed, yeah. No, that absolutely makes sense i guess my follow-up question will be on the days where you haven't woken up with them on as you say because sometimes you'll wake up and you've got the frame of reference on um is there a trigger that gets you to remember to take that frame of reference is there something that you can that you have within your routine 
that gives you a mental trigger to say this is the frame of reference that I need to put. Like we both wear glasses. I will go outside and if I look outside and I can't see you know, the trees at the end of the garden, it's a nice reference point. Now I've got to put my glasses on and I need I need to be able to see more clearly. So it is there something that gives you that kind of jolt to maybe jolt's not the right word, but that trigger to just Yes, on it. there is. Um, and it is very physical. So um, it is it is a black bordered square. Okay. Now, I've, I'm saying that quite literally. In our sunrooms, um, I have black window squares. Yeah. And I decided to use those as a trigger specifically um, to... To, to prompt my brain as soon as I see them, that that's what I want to do. Um, and then I have a secondary trigger, which is nature itself. We're very blessed here in Scotland where we live that there is so much going on outside, you know, outside at any given time. The other day at the bird tree here, which you've seen, it was there must have been 50, 60 birds in the tree. There was nine female grouse and three male grouse. And then there was five little baby rabbits running about. Now, you'd think it was a cartoon, right? <laughs> it's not a normal day outside, right? Yeah. And it's unified by spring arriving. So it's, you know, so there's noise here now that wasn't here two weeks ago. Yeah. So nature is my secondary prompt. Yeah. Because there's something about getting older that nature becomes more, uh, I wouldn't like to say curi curious, but it is a bit of that becomes more relevant mm -hmm. you start you start to become mortally aware of how fragile life is as an ecosystem yeah and nature shows you that absolutely Root times so so you have the black square from our sunrooms as a prompt i can apply that to my car yeah windscreen i can apply that to an office room i can apply that to being on a plane yeah it's just your decision um, as to what your trigger is, and then nature naturally takes me there, because sometimes, you know, uh, Hayden, uh, I'll have to, you know, you have to, you'll have to return and visit. Uh, we've got this really rubbishy bird table thing made of wood next to the window. I mean, it's it's literally almost touching the glass, and it's the birds appear on it and stop and sit, and they're literally this close. Yeah. Um, if you're listening, I've got my hand. Just a, maybe not even a foot from my face, and there you don't tend to see things that close that often, and it's extraordinary, right? So that's that prompt to go. Yeah, time is endless. Yeah, um, and there's something magical about the universe that's way beyond my brain's comprehension, and that also gives me that trigger to step back into practicing that frame of reference. Very nice. I think the, uh, right? the yep. So the the black frame, I think, is a really powerful technique that yeah, I don't want to underplay for anybody listening to this as to how how informed that is as a way to set a set a habit is because we could we could all apply that like we've all got yeah. we don't all have the views that you have, but we certainly have things that we could utilize like that. Which if you give it a meaning again, coming back to the chapter we were describing. That meaning can carry forward and, and help to reinforce a habit, which I think is a lovely, uh, a lovely technique. So, very good. Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, and you know, the only thing I'd say to anyone listening is these things just take practice, and the secret to practice is to do it as often as you can remember until it becomes something you like doing. And 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 that's you know, for me, it's become important because you know, some days, hey, you wake up and you feel grumpy, right, or you feel groggy, or your body recovery systems are telling you something different and they you're off kilter because they're telling you something and you you know and sometimes we can mistake that for a feeling when in yeah. fact it's the physical response to something yeah. so, so having processes to get back on track is how we can make the most of our time however long we're blessed to have it so, Mr. Brat, it's been marvellous to talk to you today. What a great conversation from the Queen right the way through to the Black Frame um, and, er and everything in between. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Double D. And, and once again, we truly appreciate you taking part 
in being in the book project too. It's a joy to have you involved in that, Hayden. Thank you, Dave. No, I've absolutely loved our conversation. As always, great value, good laughs. And um, yeah, just really nice to connect with you again. Thank you for tuning in to Anne.DD. For ongoing inspiration, follow us at Anne.Scott on Instagram and online. Keep going, keep inspiring until our next episode.